Hello, everybody. All right. I'm working it out. Ooh, pulling up those pants. Pulling up my pants. I'm drinking my coffee. Boom. What's up, people? Hello, people. How are you today? Hello, everybody here on Twitch land. Hello. 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 Okay. Making some notes, getting ready to go. Taco Girl, what's up? Zoe, what's up? And as always, I ask you to please go on to Twitch and fire it up over there. <clears throat> every <clears throat> every viewer I get helps. Crystal Reese VA, good morning. Uh, Crystal, if you can go over to Twitch as well and pop me up over there as a viewer, that would be incredibly helpful. I am so far behind. I got to get like like popular and shit. And I will, I will. Chrissy, what's up? Uh, Twitch is Spike Spencer Speaks, and uh, today I'm doing the Mind Scrambler podcast, <clears throat> which is uh, awesome, by the way, just saying that. I'm still back in the studio here. I've got, um, you know, nothing on the walls yet. Sorry. Uh, but I'm working on that. You know, as you can see, I do have my books here. These are my books. I wrote both of those. I've got more coming. <clears throat> and behind me here is going to be um, a board. So I think I'm going to paint this a different color. I just went with white, you know. And people say, oh, do green screens. Like, you know, I, it's, that's like, that smacks of effort and editing. And I don't want to do that. So why am I suddenly blurry over here? You guys saw that. It just went, oh, oh it's because my hand went in front. Uh -huh. Oh, 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 I'm learning technology. All right, so, hope everybody's having a fantastic day. I am, it is beautiful out here. Wolfman19 just followed me. Thank you, Wolfman19, woo! Uh, a Jedi mind trick, yes. As a matter of fact, I, it's so funny that you would say that because I just... Um, Wolfman19 is now hosting me. I don't know what that means, but thank you, man. Um, yeah, Kim and I, I was, well, I was talking to Kim about this. Because I've, I've wanted to do this for a while. Uh, the concept of midichlorians and the concept of Jedi and the concept of the Force is freaking real. Now, it may not be exactly the same way as in Star Wars, etc., but the concepts are valid. Oh, it's Wolf Woman. Wolf Woman? I am so sorry. I'm not the bad guy. It's baby, it's baby. All right. Wolf Woman, baby. Wolf up? Thank you so much for coming. Our taco girl is over here now. Excellent. Hey, I'm all about cool women. I'm married to a strong woman. Uh, our little boy has a Wonder Woman shirt. And we'll be walking around and people go, oh, Wonder Woman. And Kim will go, hey, baby, who's that? And he'll look down and he'll go, Mama. Like, that's right, because my wife is Wonder Woman. Uh, good afternoon, Red. How are ya? I call you Crystal. Okay, Wolf Woman, I call you Crystal. Wait, is that Crystal over here? Crystal Reese? Crystal, Crystal? Crystal, Crystal. Gotcha. Okay, so. <coughs> Am I right in this one? Anywho. We're all friends here. We're all hanging out. And I'm glad to see you guys coming over here over to Twitch. That's helping me out a lot. Uh, now I need 70 more people. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Uh, the Mind Scrambler podcast is still not actually out. Uh, I'm working on that. But as you see, I've got a mic now that matches my colors. See that? Isn't that cool? It's cool. Look at that. That, this is like Iron Man colors. Okay, so if you guys know my color scheme for the Minecraft podcast, well then you know it's it's Iron Man colors, my favorite superhero, actually, because um, it's just like you and me. 
only awesomer. And uh, so there you go. Share your link on social media. Oh yeah, I have a full hoot sweet campaign that goes on each week. I do Monday nights. I do a post. Tuesday morning at nine, and then I try to do one right. I mean, uh, at eight in the morning to remind, and then one at nine let people know I'm going live. <clears throat> then I follow, repeat that process on Wednesday or Thursday. Then I do like Saturday or something for Sunday. Sunday's laid back. That's right. Discord. I'm actually over there from time to time. Um, like I said, I am learning this Twitch thing, and I am I'm getting it and figuring it out. It's it takes a little bit of you know work, but more will happen as I grow. I mean, I got a nice microphone here, so you guys can hear me well there, and uh, I got a nice. Uh, camera here, uh, and I've got my. This is all done on my MacBook Air because all I'm doing is talking. I don't. I'm not. I'm not gaming. I'm not doing any of the crazy stuff that a lot of people do yet. Uh, so I don't need a big setup. Uh, right now, this is all about brain food, and uh, eventually I might throw something in. I mean, if I can find a way to play video games, write it off. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. And a way to play video games and say, honey, I'm working. You know, that's cool. Because, see, the thing is, I'm not doing video games, not because I don't want to do video games. I don't know video games. I really don't understand them now. Because <clears throat> I did play video games a long time ago. Oh, I got some of my BLT on my, on my computer. Mmm, BLT, the best sandwich ever. Um... But anyway, I played video games, like, long ago. Well, that is true. I would be Vinny from Confessionals, because I was. Hey, don't worry. It's okay, dude. We have fun. It's, it's good. Um, but anyway, I played... So, recently, I did... Uh, some of you guys saw... Um, I was in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, Kim was working on some uh, training. And so I had a week to hang out in this awesome Airbnb. It was called the Retro Gaming Airbnb. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 They had everything from Atari through to whatever the latest thing was. And I was confounded by most of it, to be honest. But I did uh, find the PlayStation 2 and Crash Bandicoot uh, 2 and 3. And I played those from beginning to end and had the most fun. I just, I mean, yeah, I could just sit there and veg out. Like, the big games that are like, you know, killing zombies and fighting other people and all that, I'm not into those. Never been into fighting games. I wasn't into, uh, gosh, Mortal Kombat or Double Dragons or anything like that, Street Fighter, anything that was around when I was first playing, you know, like in the 80s. I um, was never into that. It really wasn't. <clears throat> Not sure why. It just didn't get me. My favorite game was always called Dragon's Lair. I don't know if any of you guys would remember that one. That was old school. You got it. You got Dragon's Lair? What? Um, yeah, it was really cool. Oh, I have, I have no consoles. I have nothing. I have nothing to game with. Um, I had a PlayStation 1 up until nine months ago. No, no, sorry, a year ago. And uh, when we moved, I finally got rid of it. <laughs> I would always, every now and then, I would break it out and I would play video games. And I would just sit there for like an hour. I'm like, God, where did that hour go? What the, what the freak just happened? Uh, and I was like, wow. I was, I was playing Descent. It was my favorite. I loved Descent. And I would play, you know, Tomb Raider. Um, but the crazy thing was, I really didn't play Tomb Raider that often. I, I finally got through it again because my when I started playing, I had this PlayStation 1 with my first wife, and she looked like Tomb Raider. She looked like Lara Croft. And so I was like, okay. I just kept letting the bear kill her, you know, or the tiger. I'm like, yeah. I just sit there and watch that and drink. That's right, baby. You know, I was in a bad space. But anyway, that was a long time ago. So, uh, what else did I play? 
Oh, Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, I could play Crash Bandicoot. And it was so much fun. I really enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun. And that's actually some of the stuff. And she's over here now. Excellent. Thank you for coming over. I'm losing viewers. How's that happening over here? What's happening? I got viewers over here, and you should be over here, so I don't get it. Uh, Quantic Dreams. I don't know these people. You know, I mean, I'm in the realm. I'm in video games. I'm in anime. I'm in animation. I'm in all of that stuff. I don't play them. Like, right now, I'm in many, many video games, and I just don't play. <clears throat> so I've never really played a game that I'm in. Um, no, I've never, ever played a game that I'm in. That's what I'm saying. Uh, so, yeah, I, I kind of like to tr maybe try that once I get get a console, get something set up out here where I can actually, you know, put it together and play. Uh, well, you know, y yeah, movie style and very realistic. Video games are very movie style and realistic now. So when you're auditioning for a role in a video game, you're acting. You're auditioning for an acting role, uh, which is my forte because that's what I did. I was on camera up until 2005, and I have a baccalaureate degree from the honors program, uh, at the University of Houston, majoring in drama. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nobody cares. It has gotten me diddly squat. Hey, Bravely Default. Awesome red. Appreciate it. You know the three roles that I played in Bravely Default, right? So, oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Wolf Woman. Uh, uh, so in, in Bravely Default, so obviously I was Ring a Bell, and I was Alternus... Alternus Dim, the the knight, which I guess is the crossover of him, and I was also Private Piddler, if you remember. Private Piddler, that's me, Private Piddler. Uh, doing my best, uh, Mater from uh, Cars, I guess. And it's, and it's actually on my on my demo reel. I have um, ah, la 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 la. I have on my demo reel. I have a character that I played for. Uh, grocery gang, and I was uh, meatball sub. Yes, I was Piddler. It was one of my favorite roles. This set up right here. It just... Okay, now we're good. I had so so funny. Uh, got, we just had wind go through here in LA that just like cleaned everything out. I mean, there's debris all over. It's cool because my wife's parents are both arborists, so they have a tree company. So they're like going, "We're booked solid for the next three weeks." Because then we go to Australia. New demo reel sometime soon. Awesome. Awesome. Do it to it. Uh, yeah, we can talk demo reels. You know, I mean, Everybody's like, you got to get a demo reel. I'm like, okay, how much for a demo reel? $2,000. I'm like, really? How about I just find roles that I did and splice those together? So that's what I did. Anyway. So, ladies and gentlemen, peoples, it is time to do this podcast. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Well, I am. And this heater doesn't work worth a crap! I've had it going for like an hour and I'm cold. Alright. I put on some lipstick so I go nice. Hopefully my tooth will stay in. Because this one is finally healed really, really nice. And so I'm going to get an actual temporary before I go to Australia, I believe. So it's going to be very nice. So I will be normal. Ah, oh, very excited. Okay, everybody. So <clears throat> we're going to talk about video games in just a second. And <clears throat> this is a Yeti Nano, actually. It's smaller, a little more tech. Uh, and it's got a button where I could talk to people. I could set it here in the middle and it'd get both of us, which I'm probably not going to do. We'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. <clears throat> so, as you all know, for the next 30 minutes, I will be chatting about this podcast. I'll be doing the podcast. Uh, I will not be able to talk to you guys. <coughs> so, let's make this podcast happen. Here we go. Looking good, looking good. Everything is working. Excellent. And 
Hello, hello, and welcome to my podcast. Spike Spencer here. This is the Mind Scrambler podcast. Thank you for coming. Uh, today, I have something interesting. Since I am in the world of video games, animation, anime, uh, comics, manga, all of that, I've been in that realm for a very long time, 25 years, in fact. Um, a lot of what I teach I use references to video games or sci-fi, which is my nerd out. Completely, I'm telling you right now, Star Wars, Star Trek, you name it, I'm all about sci-fi. I will watch it. I'm starting to watch The Magicians right now, um, watching The Expanse, and uh, again, I mean, I haven't seen the last uh, episodes. Um, But anyway, that's a little bit about me. And hey, this podcast is about learning who I am as well as who you are, right? Right, okay. So I'm a nerd. There you go. Uh, What I'm going to be talking about today, though, is your life is like a video game. Now, think about that for a minute. There are actually people who have put out in the the quantum realm saying, hey, you know what? We actually are in a simulation. It may not be a video game per se, but we're in a simulation. And that's an interesting concept I will get to uh, at the end. As a matter of fact, I'm going to write a note Uh, down here to the matrix, basically, simulation, because uh, that's a little deep to jump right in on. But I want you to think about this for a second. Wherever you are in your life is your starting point, let's say. And that's, that's where you are in the game right now. So if your life is a video game, whatever level you're at is where you are. So you can do this for yourself. You can say, you know what, I feel like I'm at level three of a 10 level game, or I'm at level one of a thousand level game, you know, whatever you want, that's your own thing. But every life, every video game has levels. And some people might call those plateaus. And the way to get to the next level is by what? Playing the game. You have to play the game. You have to move forward and you have to work. You have to do things. You have to move. And this is something that a lot of people seem to forget is that if your life is like a video game, well, would anybody want to watch a video game of you sitting and doing nothing but moving buttons? I mean, people will watch people playing video games and watch their reactions and watch while they're actually, you know, what they're doing on screen. But in a video game, you have to do things. You have to move. You have to fight. And that's what life is about. You have to join in the game. So let's think about it for a second. This level that you're on, let's say you want to get to the next level. What do you have to do? Well, in video games, there is a path. You need to find the path to the end, which is whatever that path is. It can be up, it can be down, it can be sideways, it can be around and around, it can be anything. It is absolutely open. But when you get into the game, let's say you know nothing about this game. You have no idea what's coming. You have no idea what's behind you, in front of you, to the side. And yet you move. You go and you do something. And as you go, you learn. You figure out, oh, this is the path that I need to go on. And you get to the end, then there's usually a bad guy at the end, uh, and you learn something big, and you go to the next level. On this level that you're at right now, you have to get to that end. So yes, you have to move. So think about this. If you're not moving... What's happening? Your avatar is sitting there and usually doing this little... (laughs) Nothing. Nothing's happening. Nothing. That is boring. Who wants boring? You don't want your life to be like a stuck avatar. You want your life to move, to happen, to change, to be exciting, to give you things. You want to level up, power up, etc., etc. So you have to move. So you start moving. And in the video games, you have to, let's say you power up or something, and you see a little something, you pick it up. It's a suitcase or a med kit or something like that, and boom, you're juiced up. You've got some power. You've got some energy. Well, in your real life, what is that? Food. Food. So what kind of food are you eating? Think about that. 
what is is it giving you energy? Um, it, are you vitamins, supplements, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera, whatever it is, maybe it's exercise. You get a power up, and it's like, oh, now I've, I've got some energy. Well, maybe you got up and went and got moving. You ran, ran a mile, and you feel good. You did some Pilates or some push-ups, or whatever it is. <clears throat> but that's your power up. That's what keeps you moving. That's your energy, sustainable. All right. So you keep on going, and then you come across somebody that's in your way. Something that you have to fight sometimes. You have to kill. Huh. And this is the weird thing. Now, some video games are nice and fun and good for kids, and some video games are pretty damn raunchy and hard and very, very full of violence. All right, let's get the disclaimer out there. I'm not saying that video games cause uh, violence. I, I am definitely saying that you don't want to do any violence in your real life like you would do in a video game. That's not what I'm talking about. But what they are are adversaries. They are tests. They are um, impediments to your goal, which is to get to the end of the game, or at least the end of the level. So what do you do? You fight! That's what you fight. That's what you do. You fight. So how do you fight? Depending on the game, you could throw water balloons, or you could be stabbing and firing and shooting and all of that. Whatever it is, it is something that you have to get past. Now, in real life, what are those things? I call those limitations. Those are the limitations that are mostly in your brain. If it's a physical limitation, then obviously you combine a power up and you fight that thing. You go boom, boom, you get some power, you get there. Once you get the power, now you have the, the, the strength to fight whatever this thing is, and you beat it, you defeat it, and you move on. Most of us, the battles we're fighting are in our own brain. So these limitations, these zombies that are trying to bite you are actually in your freaking cranium. And you have to fight those. And a lot of people don't understand that the mental fight, the mental work that we do is as important, if not more important, than the physical work we do. Um, like, let's say you've got a video game where you've got this, this big, big macho beast guy, right? And you've got to fight him. Well, there's always a way to beat him. There's always a way to beat whatever it is there. Well, if that person has a weakness, which all of them do, you have to find it. Well, you have a weakness too, and that's usually up here. In a video game, you know, maybe it's an Achilles heel or it's a, a scale on the back or a, a tattoo you've got to shoot a million times, whatever it is. But when you're fighting that beast in your brain, you have to find a way to win and defeat that and then move on. So that is some of the impediments that we're dealing with if our life is a video game. Now we go through the level. Now, I'm not saying that this level, the end of this level, is the end of the video game. No, I'm saying this is just one level. You know, and we're all, so what, what's happening? We're already, you know, traveling all over the place. We're already fighting all kinds of bad things just to get to the end of this one freaking level. You're tired and then you've got something worse, something even worse at the end. Hmm. Well, what happens at the end of all, pretty much every level? You have to defeat a boss or a big, you know, beast. These are fears. Think about them as your fears. All success lies on the other side of your fear. So all success lies on the other side of defeating that big baddie at the end. You got to kick his ass and then you move on to the next level. Just like in life, just like in video games. It's getting kind of weird, isn't it? Because it fits. It matches. And <coughs> excuse me. once you get through this level, and let's say, now we're on level one, so it's not that hard, right? You're going through, you get to the end, and you, you fight this, this thing, and it's not incredibly hard. You learn a few things, a few tricks, and then boom. You get you defeat them, and you move up to the next level. And then it gets substantially harder and harder and harder as you go. However, the points get bigger and bigger and bigger as you go, just like in life. So the next level that you have, this fear that you're on the other side, maybe it's a public speaking that you're afraid to do. Maybe it's uh, talking to somebody that you want to maybe have a relationship. Um, some of you guys got some fear in your heart right now because I said that. You know what I'm talking about. You just felt it in your heart. You're like, oh, that scares the crap out of me. Okay, that's fine. That could be your big baddie at the end that you need to defeat. And once you do it once, then it's like, oh, well, pfft, 
that wasn't that hard. And then you do it again. Like for speaking, for example, I, let's say if I'm speaking in front of five people and I was nervous, I'm like, ah. Uh. I mean, once in college, um, I did the curtain speech. Um, I was nervous as hell. I almost choked up because, I mean, I've been in front of hundreds of people at, by that time, but now it was just me, not a mask, not a character, you know, not an avatar. That was me. And I had to say things to people, and I was like, today we've got a show. You know, so I was scared. And then I got over that. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm in front of these people. And then I was like the lead in the thing where it was just me. And I'm like, ah, no big deal. And then you move on. Then you get in front of a thousand people. And you walk out and you're like, that's a lot of people. Now, same thing. It doesn't matter. You're still saying the same stuff. What you're doing is not changing. So that's the idea of defeating your big baddie at the end. You do it. And then... Later on, maybe you'll have another level that you have to get past. But you can't go from level 1 up to level 10. You have to go each level one at a time, one at a time. Because you learn things along the way. And that's very important. I'm sorry if you guys can hear. Uh, there are uh, leaf blowers going around here. I don't know if you guys can hear that very well or not. If you can, hey, that's just ambiance, ambiance. And, of course, that's just kicking in. All right. So now we get to the end of the level. We defeat the baddie. And we go to the next level. Well, what happens? You have new problems. You have new uh, adversaries. You have new trails. It's all brand new. You're starting over from scratch on a different level. Now, by this time, what's really cool is along the way, you've probably grabbed on to some new abilities. What is that? Learning. You've learned. You learn something, and now you utilize that and go to the next level. It's just like in martial arts, guys. You train, you train, you train. You can't take a pill, like in the Matrix, and suddenly, I know Kung Fu. No, it's not like that. You have to train, train, train. And you get up to a plateau, and you fight, 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 and you go until, bam, suddenly another level of learning comes to you, just like a video game. Everything in your life is going to stack on to the other. So as you go up the level of the next video game, you defeat the baddie at the end, you learn more. Defeat the baddie at the end, you learn more. As you get up to the top, you get better and better at what you do. And as you get better and better at what you do, the points are better, the, the power-ups are better, everything gets better as you go up. And it also gets harder because you're learning, and that is a blessing. So take that as what it is. It is a blessing. Um, all right. Here's another cool thing about video games that is quite interesting. I, I said this a long time ago when I first started my uh, my Twitch stream. I had talked about video games because originally I was going to call this uh, podcast uh, "Cheat Codes" or "Game On" or something along that line. Uh, and then my subconscious mind gave me "Mind Scrambler," uh, which was awesome. And I had mentioned, I touched on this. Um, a while back, in a video game, you have roughly usually three lives. You go and you work and you work and you work and you die and you work and, re and you die. You fight, you fight, and you die. And then what happens? The game is over. The end. Well, what do you do? You hit the red button that says reset. You can do that. You can do that with your life. You can reset your life at any given time. And you have endless resets. You can change every year. You can do something different. It doesn't matter. There are no rules. And the interesting thing about these lives that supposedly are lost, they're not. They're called mistakes. They're called lessons. Some people would call them failures. Like, oh, I died. I failed. No. You learned. Because the next time you do it, you're going to remember, oh, I've been on this road before. Don't go behind that tree. There's a zombie there turn right instead. Then you turn right and, oh, crap, there's a zombie there too. Okay, well, I should have gone forward then. Okay. So after the next lesson, lesson, success. That is what video games do, and that is what your life does. Every time you have a failure, you can go try again. And that's the beautiful thing about video games. And it's a lot of fun, because usually uh, when you die, there's something like, in real life, it doesn't sound like that. It sounds like crying, screaming, raging at the world, um, 
yeah, lots of anger. But as long as you learn from it, then it's okay. You let it rush through you and blah. Now you go and you learn. You get to go to the next level and you have more tools, which is very, very important because you're going to use those tools. Along the way, sometimes you're going to lose those tools. You're going to lose energy. You're going to lose, uh, you know, some some um, uh, some weapons or whatever it is. That happens. Think about something right now that you know in your life that you got rid of, that you don't use any longer, that you've thrown away. That is a something that you had that you no longer have, or you go, oh, wow, I haven't done that in a long time. Like, uh, I haven't really juggled in a long time. Or I used to break dance when I was freaking, you know, 15, 16. That was a long time ago. If I tried it right now, I would die. But there are a lot of tools that you can bring back if you need them, like riding a bike. You know, you don't have to relearn that. It's all in your subconscious. Just like in the video game, you have these tools in your backlog, and you can get those, or you have to reacquire them. The main thing, I, it's just, it's interesting when you think about it all as a video game, you are in charge of the video game. Even if you have adversaries, even if you have other people doing bad things to you, you're in charge. You can move, you can start over, you can retrain your brain, you can retrain your mind. In video games, you just hit the reset button. It's not quite that easy in real life. You have work that you have to do. And I work with people um, in real life who've had things happen to them. And we turn it around and say, okay, well, how do you learn from this? What are the lessons that you learn from this? Good, bad, ugly, doesn't matter. There are lessons to be learned from everything. And that's how you go through and move to the next level. You have to go through to the next level and to fight the big baddie at the end and then get on to the next level. Unless, of course, you have hacks. The cheat codes. Ah, I know some of you guys are waiting for that. So what are cheat codes? Well, now you would call them life hacks. Or I would call it coaching. If you are doing something in your life, let's say your life is your video game, and you know you've got to go to this level and you've got to fight that big baddie at the end. Well, what if somebody said, well, okay, here's a way to fight that big baddie because I fought that big baddie before, and what you need to do is aim for his left knee. Once you hit that left knee, he goes down, then you can chop his head off. And you're like, okay, great, I didn't know that before. Now, that little bit of information is going to help you defeat the big baddie at the end faster, and you get to move on. That's what coaching does in this world. That's what life hacking does. That's what learning, training, books. That is what, that's what they do. It is a life hack. It's like a a cheat code in a video game. You learn how to do things and you don't have to fight as hard or you get to save your energy. You get to save your weapons to go to the next level. That's what success is. It's taking the things that you have learned and um, and assessed and acquired along the way to be able to take those to the next level with you. You can always fight better on the next level when you're able to bring all of your tools with you from the first level. But sometimes if you die at the end and you still have that life left and you start on the next level, but you've got nothing, that sucks. Then you have to reacquire everything. Well, we don't have to do that in our lives. We don't have to. You acquire something, it's in your brain. You know how to do that, that is knowledge. Then you can use that over and over and over again, and it gets better and better and better. The tool that you have gets honed as you use it. And that's important to note because the better you are with the tools that you have, the more of a master you are at whatever it is you're doing. When, you know, it's interesting. When I was playing, for example, you know, Crash Bandicoot, and I I was Gosh, I was even near like the end of the second or third game, and I found a move I didn't even know. And I'm like, if I had known that move, in you know, like ten levels ago, I'd have been here so much faster. Well, what did I do at that moment? I was like, well, I used the hell out of that move, but I didn't beat myself up over not having it. You know, I was like, oh, well, that would have been good. But hey, I'm here now. I've got this tool. Let's go. And what a lot of people do whenever they acquire some set of knowledge and they look back on their life and they keep 
they beat themselves up over not having this piece of knowledge back earlier in the life. You didn't have it. You can't beat yourself up over it. Uh, there's a podcast I did called Hindsight uh, Isn't 2020. Hindsight's kind of a dick. That is a podcast you need to listen to if you're beating yourself up over things that you uh, did in the past uh, because you didn't have a weapon, a tool, uh, a power-up, or whatever in your life now uh, that you have now, but you didn't have it then. Can't beat yourself up. You played the game the best you could with the knowledge and uh, level where you were, period. So you have to be cool with that. So then... um, if you have these hacks that will propel you forward, sometimes there's like that secret door that takes you on up to you know a different level uh, or a side level or something where it's all about rewards and you just you just run through and you're like I am just getting all the cool shit yeah awesome that's really cool sometimes that does happen in real life too <clears throat> that's that's like when you're utilizing the tools that you have. And you get these hacks, these cheat codes. Somebody helps you. Somebody coaches you. They're going to tell you where the good stuff is. You know, they're going to say, "Hey, you know what? When you're there, uh, like in real life, let's say they say, oh, by the way, um, if you go to so and so when you're at the uh, airline on this specific day, they've got free wine and they open it up to everybody. You should go there then. Oh, awesome! So you get to go. You have some free drinks. Yay! Get on the flight." Coaches will tell you where the good stuff is. They will tell you how to access it uh, and how to move forward in your life. They'll also help you clear out things that are in the past. Like sometimes if you're in a video game where you have a dark shroud over you or something that's like eating away at you that is like taking your power and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm just slogging through. And then you meet a wizard and the wizard goes, zap, and suddenly that darkness is gone. Now you're moving fast, you're fighting harder, everything, you're feeling really, really good. That's what coaching does. That's what biohacks and life hacks and all of that do. That's what helps you to get rid of the junk and clear that out so you can move forward faster. That's what hacking is. That is what a cheat code is in real life. It's just like a video game. You see how all of this is working? It's it's so interesting if you look at yourself in the terms of a video game, you can understand you can win this video game. If you're feeling powerless in some form of your life, understand that was a lesson that you were being taught. Whether you liked it or wanted it or not, it doesn't matter. There are lessons there. When you look at it from that standpoint, you say, okay, how do I win this video game from where I am right now? I've been eaten by zombies. uh, I've been set on fire. I've got arrows through my eye, and this sucks, and I can't seem to break through this wall. Well, what do you do? If it's a video game, I'm pretty much willing to bet that you guys are going to continue to play until you figure it out. And then you finally get around it, and you go, oh, well, damn, that was easy. And then you never get stuck in that hole again because you learned the lesson and you move past. That's what we're doing now. That's what this podcast is about, to help give you these tools, these biohacks, these life hacks, these cheat codes, to help you realize that you have the power, that you are the player. You are ready player one, baby. It is time to work. So it's really in how you look at things. And I wanted to get back to um, the simulation idea, the the, the big quantum realm, and somebody was talking about this way. It's like, we're in a simulation, let's say. Um, this is a little woo-woo. This is a little out there, but I want to I wanna run it by you guys because I think there's something to do. With, there's something good here. Is Oh, one uh, before I get on to this big, big thing, remember one other thing. Um, in video games, a lot of video game, games, you get to help people. A lot of video games, you get points for helping people. You kill the bad guys, sure, but you help people. Usually, most video games, you don't go around killing the good guys. That's life. That's real life. You help others. That's where your points lie in the real world. So the more service you do, the more puppies you you uh, free, and the more uh, kittens you get down from, uh, trees and the more babies you save and, and the more people you you rescue or whatever, that is where the real points are in life. So 
I just wanted to say that because a lot of people say, oh, it's a video game. They're so violent. You're killing everybody, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they are. That's fine. But that's it's a form of escape. It's just like looking at, uh, if you've ever been to Japan, um, if you get on the subway and you sit down and you look and everybody's looking at manga and it's awful, horrible. I mean, there's all kinds of horrid, horrible things. You're looking at it like, man, wow. And they're just sitting there and they just, they just read it. They're just watching it, reading it, whatever. And then uh, they get off and then they go. And they have one of the lowest crime rates in the world because they're doing all that. They're working it all out in their brain and getting it out. And I think that's kind of what video games help too. They get rid of some of that aggression and most people. Anyway, that's my disclaimer. But the idea, the concept is that, that think about it this way. If your life is a simulation, then who's playing it? Are you playing it? Are you in the game? If you're in the game or in the simulation, where the hell did you come from? Well, that's the big question that everybody needs wants to know. You know, why are we here? What is the purpose? And something that has been put forth in my circles and in, in the, the quantum realm, etc., is that you know we are we are bodies of energy. We are all energy. We are all made up of energy. That's that's science. We know that, and that energy had to come from somewhere. So what if, just speculating, what if you needed to learn something and you're floating around in the ether or up in heaven or in the source or the universe or flying spaghetti monster colander or whatever, you are energy and you come down to inhabit a being to learn something. And you say, okay, I need to learn this. Let's see if I can get this done in this life. And you go down and you become this vessel, this little baby, and you forget everything. It's like, okay, you hopefully you'll learn it this time. Boo! Go. And now you're in a simulation, but you don't know anything. And so you're trying to learn. And you've got this little bitty thing in your heart that's saying, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do that. That's the drive that says, oh, I wanna, I'm in this video game and I need to get to that, to the end of this level so I can learn something so I can find what's on the next level. That's the desire that's put in your heart. Why is that in there? Why is everybody's desire different? You know, but the things I desire to do, you don't desire to do, maybe. And uh, you have something that you desire to do, I don't want to do. That's yours. Maybe that is the reason for the video game. Maybe that is the reason for the simulation. I don't know. Blow your brain. I don't know. I have no idea. But it's something to interest, something interesting to ponder. And to think about it, and if it is a video game, if it is a simulation, you can win it. And if it is a video game and you die, quote unquote, in there, you fail, you fail, you fail. Well, hit the reset button and start over and keep going. It's called going back to the basics. Keep going, keep going. Like if you're wealthy and married and happy and then there's a divorce, a bankruptcy, and you lose everything, you go down to nothing. Hey, I did that. So if you do that, what do you got to do? Hit that red button, reset, start over. And you can. And I did. And I went down different paths. And now I'm in an amazing relationship. And my business is starting to, to take off. I've, I'm going to Australia in three weeks to sign freaking autographs. <coughs> I mean, that doesn't suck. So, But I chose these things. I chose what I was going to do next. I could have gone anywhere. I could have gone to Bangladesh. I could have you know, gone to the moon. I don't know. But I want to leave you with this. Your life is your video game. You have power over that game. You have to play it if you want to win. If you don't want to win, you're just going to sit there like that avatar. And nothing's going to happen. And that's boring. Get out there. Find your power-ups. Beat your adversaries. Get the big baddie at the next level so you can go up to the, the second level, third level, fourth level, hundred thousandth level, whatever it is in your life. Keep learning as you go. Battle the thing at the end. Move on. That thing you battle at the end is the fear that you have and you need to get onto the other side of that and then you get to go to the next level bringing all that awesomeness that you have with you. And that is a cool ass video game. And I'm going to leave you with that. Go play. Have fun. Enjoy your life. And I look forward to seeing you on the next Mind Scrambler podcast. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, people. That is it. I'm turning the heater on, man. Damn. Oh, come on. Let's do this. Let's do this. Get some heat up in here. Mm. 
Okay, anything happening over here? No. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that made some understanding there. Let's see what's going on over here. I had some blue ketu. Hello, hello, hello. Um, what if your big baddie is hating yourself? Well, that is a big baddie, and there's a lot of reasons that that can happen. Uh, what would you suggest a victim of a situation that gave you PTSD? Actually, uh, I can tell you I train people in something called t uh, timeline therapy. It is for uh, it is used in the UK for PTSD. Uh, it's been used in uh, Croatia, Serbia uh, for victims of PTSD, and it's being picked up more. Uh, that and hypnotherapy, uh, very, very good uh, for PTSD. Um, let's see, another reason, allow, gotcha, that's fine. I'm not afraid to talk about anything. Um, okay. Uh, where was it there? Uh, oh, I, I said I was going to allow that. Uh, huh. Sorry, Blue Ketu. Um, so, Blue Ketu, yes, I do actually know uh, a lot that will help people. I'm sorry that you're uh, feeling that way because I was doing my podcast and uh, so, you know, yeah, I'm actually licensed. I'm a timeline therapy uh, certified coach. I'm an NLP certified coach. I'm a bank code personality sales training certified uh, trainer, and I'm also a hypnotherapy certified. So yes, I do know a couple of things, and I've been teaching dating and relationships for over 14 years. So um, if you want me to help, that's great. Uh, you can go to my websites. You can go to don'tkillyourdate.com. I have lots of relationship stuff up there. Uh, I Coaching is coaching. Like, uh, like Red said, I'm not a doctor. I am a coach. Um, do, do I coach people that have been uh, abused? Yes, absolutely. And we go through. Timeline therapy is amazing. That will help. Uh, if you want to look it up, I, I suggest that you do. Uh, I wish you all the best in all things. Um, and I'm sorry that you feel that you have to lash out at me. Uh, I understand that. And that's fine. Uh, I really do hope you get what you need. Uh, let's see. Red. Hey, thanks, Red. I appreciate that. Uh, I am a coach. And uh, I'm not a doctor. And uh, yeah, if you do need professional help, I would never say you don't want professional help. I do coaching. If there's something that's deep, 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 and you need some help with that, there's plenty of other people that can do that, but people in my uh, realm that absolutely can do amazing things. I recommend a podcast uh, by Jim Fortin, F-O-R-T-I-N, uh, if you are having some issues. Uh, that will give you some new perspective because he has helped people, some of the most famous people in the world, uh, deal with really big honking issues like that. Uh, you are where you are. You have chosen to feel the way you feel because our emotions are a choice. If you are made angry by something, then that is a reaction, certainly. Uh, if you hold on to that anger, it is a decision. And that is something you have to work on because you are in charge of your life. You are in charge of your reaction to anything. Nobody can make you feel anything. You decide. There you go. Uh, let's see. What else? Do you guys have any questions for me? i got 10 minutes to hang out. I hope Blue Ketu will come back uh, and say howdy. Um, we can have a chat about some things. That's not really what I'm talking about today, but I'm not on the podcast now. So it's like ask me anything. I'm cool. I'll give you anything I can help. I can to help you. Oh. You see, this is something else. I, it's interesting. I'm just going to share with you guys. I Sometimes what I'll do is I will go to uh, YouTube and I will find a... Uh, thank you, Red. Uh, I would go to YouTube and I'll find somebody who's like in dating or relationships or something. And I'll kind of watch some of the chats because I can help those people. And that's also some people that I can say, well, you know, if you want to be a a client of mine, then, you know, come on. I can literally help you um, if you're willing to put forth the effort for you. And so many people are so stuck in this victim mentality, they're not willing to put anything forward. Hey, Bill's here. What's up, man? I uh, just had my podcast. It was amazing. I uh, had a really good, I did a big uh, video game metaphor for life, uh, and that's well, it was pretty uh, cool. Uh, I've been wanting to do that. Wait, uh, seriously, guys, when I talk about the midichlorians in the forest, oh, it, that's going to be a good one because I'm going to geek out like a mofo. Um, and that's going to be fun because it's true. I'm just waiting until a time where I can move shit with my brain. 
Ha! You felt that, didn't you? Uh, anyway, um, where was I going with that, Red? I forgot. I was saying something. I was having fun. And then Bill jumped in and said, what's up? See? Bill moved. Um, <coughs> oh, this is what I was going to tell you. So I looked at one message deleted by a moderator. Ask moderator permission to post it. Huh. What just happened? I don't know. I don't know how to find out if uh, something was ZZ Vita. So ZZ Vita just got timed out for 10 seconds for something. Okay. So, Red, did you delete something there? Did they say something nasty? Um, we got some trolls that pop in from time to time. It's uh, really annoying. Oh, here's what I'm going to say. So, like the possibility of, of Blue or someone else, if you try to help them and give them advice, they won't take it a lot of times um, because they're too busy fighting for their limitations to be say, well, well, you know, I didn't choose this, so, nee. you know, it's like, well, yes and no. I mean, but you have to view it from the point that you did choose it um, so that you can have power over it. It's a, it's a big thing. It's not saying it's your fault, but it is your problem kind of thing. And when you tell somebody, hey, I know this is how it is because um, I went through it and I know what works. This is why I wrote this, this book right here. Why did I write that book? Because I wanted to help guys. I wanted to help guys have better dating and relationships. And how do I know that works? Because that's what I did. And I know it works because I did the field research. Now, if I try to tell somebody, which is exactly what happened, by the way, um, a guy was just screaming about how women are awful and they, they want this and they want that. I'm like, well, how the hell do you know what you, they want? Because if you knew what they wanted, you'd give it to them, wouldn't you? Because the rewards are spectacular. And he's like, well, they just don't. Bah, 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 bah. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, you know, I'm trying to help this guy. I'm like, you're angry. I get that. You have to, you know, take a breath. You've got to look at it from a different way. You know, it's like if you think you can or you think you can't, either way, you're right. And he was just not having any of it. He's like, they don't like this. They don't want that, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I know what women want. You don't. I gave it to them. You won't. So, therefore, you're going to be an angry little troll for the rest of your life until you figure it out, until your video game gets boop, reset. And it was interesting because it didn't matter what I, what I said or what I did. He said he wanted this, but everything he did was keeping him from that. Interesting, isn't it? We fight for victimhood um, because that's that, that way, if you fight for victimhood, that means that somebody else is in charge and you can't have that. But if you fight for victimhood, it's safe because you don't have any responsibility. And if you tell somebody, hey, it's your responsibility, they're, ah! <laughs> they're gonna freak the freak out because they don't wanna take responsibility for themselves. Um, I should say that in like in like voice acting, for example, uh, <laughs> I'm coaching people, and it's like, well, you know, or just acting in general. With the internet and with cable, uh, this was the argument with cable before the internet even happened. It's like there's cable. There's so many channels now. Oh my gosh, there's so many possibilities. But you have to go out and market yourself and do it yourself. So yay, possibilities. Oh crap, possibilities because they come with responsibilities. You have to market yourself. See, 99% of the jobs that I get in Hollywood are from my networking, from people I know, from me going out there and reaching out and talking to people. You know, my agent gets me a couple. And not saying my, I get a bad agent, it's just that's the way it is. You know, I probably use a better agent, but, you know, hey, they're lovely, wonderful people. But the point is, I'm doing it. And so now there's new things. It's like, okay, so now there's Facebook. There's Instagram, there's Twitter, there's now TikTok, there's all these things in YouTube and Twitch and blah, 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 blah. Well, what are we doing? It's like, man, the old school days of having, okay, my agent sent me an audition, I auditioned, I got it or I didn't, that's it. Now what am I do, gonna do with my day? I'm gonna go flip houses, because I'd like to eat. And that's what I did in Houston. 
people nowadays, it's like, what are you doing? Well, uh, I'm going through all of my emails to make sure there's no auditions I've got to deal with. Okay. Then I'm looking through my, uh, how can I get to be a podcast guest? How can I help a reporter out there to try to get on Forbes, et cetera, et cetera. I go over to LinkedIn and I uh, connect with, uh, you know, like 10 new voice people in a day or 10 new uh, dating and relationship coaches or people in business who might need training, etc. So you're over there for hours and then you go, oh, I have to do a Twitch stream here. Then I've got to get that Twitch stream and I've got to put it over to YouTube and get that. Then I've got to edit. i got to pull the audio from that. And then I've got to edit all of that. And then I've got the blah, 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 blah. That's your day now. That's your day if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to be successful in business. It's all about marketing. Uh, and it's entry Jay Abraham, who is one of the best marketers on the planet, if not the best marketer on the planet. And uh, Kim just saw him down in uh, Florida because she was at the uh, Tony Robbins uh, Business Mastery. <coughs> if you guys don't know who any of these people are, you need to look them up if you want to be successful, if you're going in the personal growth arena and want to build businesses, etc. And he said, it, whatever you do, you have to be 10 times better at marketing what you do than being able to do what you do. So the fact that I'm a world-class voice actor, and yes, I am tooting my own horn because <laughs> Google me, I've done a lot of work. Now, am I at the top of the game? Not even close. There are so many amazing people that are ahead of me. So what do I gotta do? I gotta market. I've gotta market myself way better so that I get up there, so that I'm you know at the top of mind with the top people. That's work. That's me doing my video game, getting my power-ups and, and defeating the, the naysayers and the trolls and the bad people and then getting to the big baddie at the end, which is a fear, which may be me talking to somebody and then I got to go past that fear to get to the next level. And that's what we all have to do. Some people do it with no problem. Some people just, you know, they just wake up in the morning and crap out dollars. Okay, fine. Bill knows who I'm talking about. We all know who they are in our industry. And it's like, they can do no wrong. They roll out of bed and boom, I'm just famous. Okay, that's totally fine. That's their karma. That's their dharma. That's whatever it is. That's great for them. That's not my path, apparently. Maybe it is my path, and I'm in my own way. Maybe I do have that, that dark thing, that shroud that's on me, and I've got to find my wizard, my coach, to help me throw that off, which I've been coached by some of the best in the world, and they have helped me get rid of a lot of junk, but maybe there's still some more junk that I've got to clear. I own that. It's my responsibility. It's my life. It's my game. There you go. Same thing with all of you guys. Um, so I'm wrapping it up here in just a minute. Uh, thanks for joining, Bill. I appreciate that, but you came in at the very end. Uh, all of these Twitch videos are my podcasts, unless I'm doing... Uh, uh, so. Every Tuesday, Thursday, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I do the Mind Scrambler podcast, which was this, uh, which is 15 minutes of chatting with you, 30 minutes of the podcast, and then 15 minutes on the end to chit-chat with you guys again. Uh, I may expand it sometime down the road as things get bigger and bigger. Uh, but that this all goes to YouTube, so all of these are on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can look me up over there, and I've got all the Mind Scramblers. They're just this. Uh, you know, chat. Um, the actual podcast, I'm still pulling. I've only got one finished podcast, and I've got to get, I think, five before I really throw it up to Libsyn and get it out there on iTunes and all that. So that's going to be happening soon. Um, and yeah, I'd love to have you guys over there. And if you can uh, join me on my socials Facebook fan page, uh, Instagram, which Kim really does. I don't really do anything with Instagram. I'm working on it. I need to. Uh, thank you, Bill. Appreciate it. Uh, and then, oh, and, and Sunday nights, 7 to 8, I do something called Food for Thought. And I, I meant it to be similar to what I used to do called Dishwashing Zen, where I would do some coach while I was washing dishes. But I was in my apartment at the time, uh, and I did a lot of that. It was just chatting because dishwashing is kind of a Zen thing for me. Um, but I'm, I may have fan, friends and uh people over in the animation world to come over and have some dinner uh, while I cook. Like uh, last weekend, or well, the weekend before last, I had Todd Habercorn uh, over and uh, Heather Harris, and they were both Vulcans, by the way, and we did a stir-fry, so you can go look that up, and uh, but we'll see. As I 
am able to open things up and, and get better with this and get more people to, to watch, then I'll do more stuff. And uh, it's a lot of fun for me, but I do have to go, I have to prep, I have a coaching client in one hour and I've got to get prepared. So have an amazing day people, go out there, do something nice for somebody else, it's free, and enjoy it. Alright, I will see y'all later. Bye.